But the biggest thing I've been thinking about as I have been exploring this idea of Gov2.0 is the idea of government as a platform. Because we've forgotten that government is actually a means of collective action. I've been reading some of the biographies of the founders, and amazing reading about Benjamin Franklin. Now, he was the guy who started the matching grant, for example, uh, you know, where citizens would raise a certain amount of money and the government would match it. He ran a volunteer fire department. He, he ran the first one in America. You know, he put together libraries and schools. and you know, He was really about citizen action. And somehow we got into a different idea, which a guy named uh, Donald Kent calls vending machine government. You know, we put in our taxes and out come roads and schools and police and fire services. You know, and we think that our job as citizens is perhaps, uh, you know, to, to let the spending keep in increasing. You know, we've gone from, you know, 6% to nearly 40% of GDP at all as, as uh, uh, the cost of, of all levels of government. But we have to get that collective action means more than collective complaint. You know, we think that collective action means doing a march or signing a petition. You know, this is a little bit like shaking the vending machine, right? That's not what it's all about. So there's a story that I saw and blogged about back in April that was just a fascinating story that I thought really was the heart of Gov2.0. It was a story about a road that was washed out in a state park in Hawaii. The government said, that's going to cost us $8 million to fix it. We just don't have it. Now, there are a bunch of lo local locals who said, whoa, this is going to devastate our economy. They got out and they fixed the road in a week. You know, they raised some money, they put it together, collective action at work. So I, the blog I did at the time was, was DIY on a civic scale, and uh, Scott Heiferman of Meetup said, no, no, it's not DIY, it's DIO, do it ourselves. And of course, wasn't that the original uh, mission of the Free Software Foundation? You know, long before it was the GNU operating system, it was just, give us the source code so we can fix it ourselves. That was where Richard started uh, the whole idea of free software, and I think it's really central. Do it ourselves is the heart of Gov2.0. And the platform that we are asking the government to build is a set of tools and services that help us to do it ourselves. And I think as we take our principles of open source and web development and all the wonderful technologies we built, what we really want to help the government rethink is, is how to make it easier for the people to create innovation, to make new things happen, uh, to solve problems without government. The government may be a convener, it may be a provider of leverage, but it's not really the provider of the finished service. And that's a lot of what I'm trying to help them think through. So that's the real lesson of open source and web tool for government. Give us the tools and we can do it ourselves. But that means that what I want you to do is, if, you, if you're interested in Washington, don't just lend your voices, lend your hands, lend your coding skills. There are a lot of opportunities uh, for technical people to contribute, and the Sunlight Hackathon is uh, probably a great start. But also go to that OSA, uh, Open Source for America webpage, sign up, you'll be informed, you'll be able to uh, uh, start to engage in what I think is an unprecedented opportunity uh, to remake uh, the way our government uses technology to build a better country for us. Thank you.